Welcome to the first episode of Southwest Magazine. I'm Vicki Hogarth. And this is Amelia Welch. Hello. <laughs> so you've agreed to be our teen correspondent. Yes, I which have. Which I think is super awesome. Yep. And you've been interning here for at CHCO for... I've been here for six months. Yep. How's that experience going for you? I have loved it so far. I just love involving myself in the community and just sort of seeing sort of the behind the scenes of how we sort of um, commemorate St. Andrews. Well, I think it's fitting that for your first uh, big topic for Southwest Magazine, you're covering the International Student Program in New Brunswick. Yep. So what inspired your interest in that topic? Um, well, I've always just sort of found an interest in like people around the world, and I've also sort of found um, that it's just really interesting, the different cultures that um, are around the world. And it's really an awesome opportunity that they come to our school and that they just sort of get thrown right into our culture, and then they can share their culture with us, and it's just a good way to create sort of a multicultural mm -hmm. um, scene in St. Andrews, which is really nice. So how many schools in Charlotte County are involved in the program? Uh, I believe there's three that are involved. I believe Fundy High is involved, St. Stephen High is involved, and our school, Sir James Dunn Academy, is involved as well. So how many students about do you have at Sir James Dunn? Um, at the beginning of this year, we had about 15 students, and they're all throughout grades 6 to 12. So I understand you talked to a couple I did. for Southwest Magazine. I did, Can you yes. tell us a little bit about who you interviewed? Um, so I interviewed um, Nils and Javi, and they are two students. Uh, Javi's in grade 12 at my school. He's in my grade. And uh, Nils is in grade 11. And uh, so I just sort of uh, interviewed them, and I got to know them a little bit about their homes uh, from where they are, and they sort of told me about their experiences living in St. Andrews for their exchange program. Um, I'm from a little town in West Germany. It's called um, Bad Hopkirchen. Okay. It's near Cologne. Okay. Yeah. And so what part of Germany is that in? In Nordrhein-Westfalen. It's like the west region of Germany. Okay. And uh, Javi, where are you from? I am from Monterrey in Mexico, almost in the north part of Mexico. Okay. And uh, so what do you think um, got you interested in coming here to Canada? Well, um, my sister did an exchange in Brazil three years ago, and then I got really interested in it. So I thought, uh, I can do this too. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's definitely. Yeah, yeah, cool. and in Canada because it's a really nice country and the people are really nice. And Javi, what do you think are some of your favorite experiences so far in Canada? Well, my favorite experience is definitely play with the snow because, <laughs> well, in Mexico. It's really hot. I never see the snow before, only in movies. And uh, it's the best. Playing the snow, feel the cold, feel your hands like they are burning for the cold. And yeah. um, I love it. And another really good experience is learn how to how to skate because yeah. well, we don't have ice, we yeah. don't have nothing like that. And it's a really good opportunity, and I like it. I, I love skate. Yeah, so what type of skating have you learned to do? Have you done hockey or speed skating? Well, I, I do the, the, boat, I, the boat. I do hockey and speed skate, and I like more hockey. Yeah. So, Nils, what do you think are some of the major differences from Germany to Canada? Well, first, um, the school in Germany, in the schools in Germany are bigger than here yep. um, and I think the teachers are more relaxed <laughs> like <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say they don't really care but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I really liked the togetherness in the school like yeah. everybody knows each other mm -hmm. you know? yeah it's definitely a, a good way to sort of make friends really easy yeah. and to be yeah. again right. really close with everyone yeah and the big difference is my schedule mm -hmm. like here we have all the days the same lessons yep and in germany it, it's different like every day we have different schedule okay yeah, yeah. and javi what do you think are some of the di differences from mexico to canada well the most big difference is the people in mexico here there are uh, we don't have a lot of people and in mexico is many many people and here is only one time like the school is always in the morning mm -hmm. and in mexico it's like two times one in the morning and the other in the night. Yep. And um, in the two times, there are a lot of people. There are more than 500 people or more 
only in one like in one year like one semester something yeah. like that is really different and the teachers too here they are more like more friendly than in mexico and yeah i think that was the most big difference so it must be cool hearing about your high school from an international student perspective. It definitely is, and it's really interesting to see my community and my school in a different light after hearing their opinions uh, about my school and the community. And I understand you also spoke with two host moms who hosted boys like Javi and Niels. I did, yes, and uh, one is a coordinator and one is a teacher at the school, and uh, they both seem to really enjoy what they do and it never seems like a job to them. It seems like they just really love what they do. I, probably because it's a lot of fun. You get to have kids from other, other countries come and stay at your house. And I don't know, I like to travel, so I take them all over the countryside. I show them the culture. And I mean, I work at the school, so it's easy for me just to take them to school. And I don't know, they're, they're, they're really fun to host, I think. Yeah, we have a lot of fun. So Kathy, is the program rewarding? What keeps you interested in such an interesting program? I love the program. It doesn't feel like work most of, most of the time. Some <laughs> days it does, but most of the time it doesn't feel like work. It's having fun. We're planning activities and I'm recruiting host families. Um, for my family personally, we've had I think maybe five kids in our, in our house now and we have learned so much from them, so much about the world. My kids have learned so many things that they didn't know about the world. Do you continue to stay in contact with the host students that you've had in previous years? Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, the first, well, Julio, of course, he was here for five months, I think from September to June, and he had asked me before he left if I would go to his graduation. And I said, well, we'll have to see because it's during our Christmas and I have school anyway, and I was lucky I actually got to go to his graduation. And then uh, from there, my second guy, I met his parents when I was down there. And then, you know, I've just kept, and I went again. I've been to Brazil how many times now? Four? Three. Three times to Brazil. <laughs> and I have Nils this year, and, and I'm already talking, or he and I have been talking about I'll go to Germany maybe next year for Christmas too. So, right. yeah, I keep in contact with them on WhatsApp, email, and I see them. Kathy, could you tell us a little bit about the process of what it's like to become a host parent in St. Andrews or anywhere in the province? Sure. If a family was interested in hosting, the first thing we do is um, fill out an application. Right. Um, on it, you have to provide three references. Um, we do a criminal record check and a vulnerable sector check. Um, I would come over to your home. We'd probably spend anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours together. Mm -hmm. We would go through the whole program. Um, all the rules, all the things to expect, and and then you know when you're all done, we would match you up with a student that had the kind of the same interests and things you were interested in. We tried to make a good match. Can you remember any of the really special moments that you've had with either um, of your host students that you've had here in the past? Well, I remember the first time Julio saw snow. <laughs> and that was pretty funny. It was almost like a two-year-old. Like when, when they first see snow, they don't know what to do because they don't have snow in Brazil where, right. where my guys are from. They've all been from the Northeast. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a really arid country. And he was on the back deck with no shoes on, nothing, his mouth wide open catching <laughs> snowflakes. And, you know, they do snow, snow angels. It was, I think the snow for him was probably one of the best. For me, too, to see him and how he behaved in the snow was, right. was funny. Yeah. Um, Halloween too. Oh yeah, Halloween. Yeah. Most other countries don't yeah. do, do Halloween. Halloween. Right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, for the Brazilians in, in particular, they loved Halloween. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Couldn't wait to get dressed up and go out trick yeah. or treating. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, Kathy, where do some of uh, the students come from, or where have most of the students come from? To uh, visit here? Right now, we have students from Brazil. Um, we had Colombians as well in the fall. Right now we have Germans, a lot of Germans, Turkish. Right. So more from Europe right now than yeah. we do from Brazil, right? So, so yeah. we have um, some students are leaving mm -hmm. at the end of this month. Right. And then I have one new Turkish student that is coming. So okay. this year in total, in the fall, I had 18 students in total wow. going to school here in St. Andrews. Yep. Um, some stayed as little uh, short of time as 10 weeks. And then some are here for the whole full school year. Some are even planning to come back for the next school year. The oh, same students, yeah. Wonderful, yeah. But and do you, so do you deal with just the ones that come to St. Andrews, or do you deal with more of like Charlotte County, 
I'm just St. Andrews. Just St. Andrews, yep. okay. Yep, St. George has their own coordinator now. They have two students coming this next semester. And in St. Stephen, there would probably be like roughly 25 students there right now. Okay. Yeah. I understand that some of the students go out on outings or field trips. So would you like to tell me a little bit about um, some of the trips that they've gone on? Sure. That's part of my job as the home state coordinator that I would take them on an outing at least once a month as a group. Mm -hmm. um, we usually start right out in September with whale watching out in the bay. And we also did... Maple syrup. Maple syrup <laughs> up in St. John. Yeah, we went snowshoeing. We did, and this weekend yeah. we're going to St. John. They're going to do laser tag in the breakout oh, room. Oh, fun. We did yeah. the breakout room last, last year. year. Yeah. Yeah. Kathy, would you like to tell me a little bit about um, how students find out about it, St. Andrews um, as a place to come visit? Uh, well, I work for a corporation of the Department of Education called Atlantic Education International. Mm -hmm. um, usually students in, in other countries have their own agent and our Atlantic Education International creates relationships with the other countries. Um, so probably right now there's over 600 I think students in okay. the province. Wow. Yeah. And then That's other really provinces great. as well have their own host programs too. Well it was certainly neat to hear that the the exchange program is not just a neat experience for the kids but mm -hmm. also for the host it's a meaningful experience it definitely is and you know they seem to really enjoy being immersed like in the community with these students and learning sort of their culture from even at home when they have them uh, living with them so it's uh, it's definitely really cool has it made you want to do an exchange of your own it has, for sure, yes. I someday hope to do something, maybe not in exchange, but to travel the world and sort of get to know different places around the world and sort of learn different things outside of St. Andrews. Yeah, but I was definitely, it was nice to hear that St. Andrews has been such a special place, being yeah. a little town for people all around the world. It has, for sure, and it also has made me realize how lucky I am to be living in such a safe and sort of really great tightly knit community and it's you know it's really nice to hear that from other people's perspectives. So did you get to talk a little bit to Niels and Javi about St. Andrews and what that experience has been for them? I did for sure and they sort of they shared to me some of their special experiences and uh, it was really nice to hear them. Um, well I didn't really have expectations like I thought maybe I go in a little bigger town or something but um, when I knew about that I'm going to here to St. Andrews, I looked in Google Earth and yeah. how it looks. <laughs> and I was really happy because it's actually almost like my town, okay. a little smaller. But it's really nice. Um, I didn't really expect much, mm -hmm. but I, I, and I was a little nervous, but um, I'm really happy to be here. Javi, did you have any special expectations for St. Andrews? Well, I, I really, I don't expect, I don't expect much because, well, in Mexico I come from a big city yep. and I say, oh, it's going to be difficult because <laughs> come to a big city, to a small town and say, okay, well, <laughs> I got to try, I don't know how it's going to be, yep. but I like it because it's small, uh, all the people know uh, the neighbor, the Friend of the friend is really cool, I like it. I would say it's really easy to find friends here. Mm -hmm. Like all the people are really open, like they want to talk with you and yep. that's how you get friends, you yeah. know. And that's really nice here. Yeah, exactly. All the people are really friendly here. Yeah. 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 That was a really interesting story, Emilio, thank you. Yes, thank you for having me on the show with you today. Well, I'm looking forward to what you cover next as our teen correspondent. And so am I. And on a different note, as far as education goes, the Premier was recently in town talking about funding efforts for post-secondary education in New Brunswick, and we caught up with him at the local community college to hear what he has in store. The community college system contributes to the growth of our province through helping to educate and provide training to our New Brunswick students who will one day join our, join our workforce. We are investing in our community colleges because we believe they provide great value to our social fabric and certainly amazing value to our economy. Our economic growth plan also has, a, have, has us investing more into our infrastructure. We believe investing in our infrastructure helps create jobs, stimulate the economy, it helps improve the quality of life by investing in hospitals and schools, and it helps ensure that we have the right environment for our uh, students to learn, like the investments that I'll be announcing today. So I'm very pleased to no longer make you wait and make the announcement. 
uh, your government will invest $2.4 million in the New Brunswick Community Colleges system in its infrastructure over the next year. The funding will be distributed among the Miramichi, Moncton, St. John, and St. Andrew campuses, St. Andrew's campuses. So we are also pleased to tell you what investment we'll be making here. Your government will invest $395,000 in infrastructure improvements right here at the St. Andrew's New Brunswick Community College. Your government is investing to improve the quality, accessibility, and affordability of college and university education in New Brunswick. This investment in the St. Andrews NBCC will improve the learning environment, create good construction jobs, and ensure that you, the students and instructors, are able to have the best quality of learning experience here right in St. Andrews. Well, we believe that investing in education not only helps the individual, that gets to go and get the education they need to fulfill their full potential, but it really does help our economic growth plan. Uh, with our multi-year economic growth plan, we are investing more in education, we're investing in training opportunities because we know that it has a major impact on the quality of life of the individuals, but also ensures that we have a strong workforce, an innovative workforce, and a productive workforce, which then will help us grow the economy, attract businesses, and create jobs. Uh, we're investing in our infrastructure as well. A major component of our multi-year economic growth plan is to invest invest in key infrastructure components that can help ensure that we're not only spurring economic growth and creating jobs, but that we'll have the schools, the hospitals, the roads, the bridges, the ports, the airports, uh, the colleges, the university infrastructure that we need to be able to have a strong workforce, to have a good quality of life, and also get our products and services to markets around the world in a competitive fashion. Well, our multi-year economic growth plan also has a major focus in ensuring that we're investing in our people and investing to grow our population. One of the best ways to ensure that our young people stay here in the province is to give them a job right away. So the Youth Employment Fund helps do that. Uh, once somebody graduates from university, college, even high school, they can apply for a Youth Employment Fund uh, uh, stay, uh, stay, um, uh, um, investment. Uh, and through a Youth Employment Fund placement, they're able to get hands-on work experience with employers in the province. And what that does is not only help the young person stay in the province, it helps them gain the experience that they need to be able to join the workforce, and it helps the employer at the same time have a, a skilled workforce and have people that are there rejuvenating its workforce. And on a more personal note, you were married in St. Andrews a few months ago. Uh, what drew you to this area for such a special occasion? Well, we certainly uh, were very excited to, to, to get married anywhere, uh, so we started talking about where we wanted to do it. We wanted it to be in New Brunswick, uh, obviously, for, for many reasons, because we love this province, and also because we wanted our family and friends to be able to all make it if possible. Uh, and we had spent some time, uh, my, my wife and I, prior to the wedding in St. Andrews, um, specifically spent some time at the Algonquin as well. Uh, we spent our holidays there with our family uh, at one point as well, so it's become a really special place for my wife and I, and obviously after the wedding it's that much more special uh, and we look forward to coming here many many years to come so we can celebrate uh, the, the beautiful day which was our wedding. And lastly with spring just around the corner so are potholes and seemingly endless road construction. Here with his final thoughts is CHCO's Ross Abrams. There was a lot of road work uh, going on in our part of the province last summer and fall, and uh, it's a bit of a headache for traffic to move where detours are long, roundabout, and time-consuming. Traffic delays everywhere. We shouldn't complain, like the politicians tell us all the time about taxes. It's present pain for future gain. doesn't help much when you're car number 20 in a lineup or you're driving a five-kilometer detour. But when the job is finished and you glide along the new surface with never a bump or thump, what a feeling. You forget the delays and the dust and the discomfort. I had a chance last summer to travel down to Black's Harbor for the first time in a number of years along the new four-lane Highway 1. What an improvement in time and comfort. The trip from Fredericton to the Miramichi is now a breeze along the new Highway 8. That used to be a trip through everybody's front yard, the old two-lane road. Every once in a while, a logging truck would deposit its load in one of those front yards. Not a pleasant experience for homeowners. 
to hear a great rumble and look out through the picture window at a yard full of logs. The new way, uh, the new Highway 8 steers away from human habitation for the most part, and it's a quicker and more convenient ride. Wasn't like that nigh on to 70 years ago, <laughs> being of a certain age, as a child, mind you, traveling from Nova Scotia into New Brunswick and on to Moncton in the early 1940s, a wide gravel road. You try to stay as far as possible behind the car ahead because the dust found its way into wherever there was a crack or loose window. The trip, Halifax to Moncton, took all day, and you arrived hot and dusty and tired. Times have changed, and we roll along now in air-conditioned comfort. Glide along, actually. If you can look back at the way it used to be, you can be thankful for, instead of annoyed at, the next roadwork detour. I'm Ross Ingram, and that's the way I see it. I'm Vicki Hogarth. Thanks for watching the premiere episode of Southwest Magazine. We'll be back again in a couple weeks with a new episode. In the meantime, you can follow us on Twitter at CHCO TV or like us on Facebook for breaking news and updates. We'll see you again soon. Southwest Magazine is a news and public affairs production of CHCO TV, New Brunswick's only source for independent community television.